Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video for Saturday, March the 26th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and it looks like we're in for an active day. Already thunderstorms going on. So let's get right to the sky cam imagery this morning. Cloudy skies over Birmingham with the lights reflecting off of those clouds. You can see the clouds sort of blocking one of the the major hills there at uh, mountains at uh, Mount Cheeha. And uh, yes, there is some rain going on in uh, across the Tennessee River Valley. And there's a shot at Decatur. Can't see the river too well, but we can certainly see the raindrops. Well, we have an interesting situation going on. There's a uh, frontal system across the area. Actually, uh, once again, I think the front's a little further north than what the uh, little red line is showing there. I think the front actually is into northern Mississippi and central Alabama. We can see that on the, the surface conditions shortly. In the upper atmosphere, we're dealing with a somewhat zonal flow with some little perturbations, some little short waves moving through uh, that flow. You can see one of those out in the uh, eastern part of, of the Rockies. Temperatures across the area, very warm. As you can see that, you can tell where that warm front is based on those 60-degree values. And uh, certainly uh, very warm across the the whole southern part of the United States, with the exception maybe of uh, southeastern Georgia. Across central Alabama, uh, we're, uh, I think the front is, you know, like on the vicinity of uh, Tuscaloosa, for example. Uh, you can see there's a fairly good spread in the dew point there. Uh, but temperatures across the area range from about uh, 52 at Fort Payne, where they've got some rain going on, and 62 at Tuscaloosa, 63 at Birmingham. And by the way, that rain is going to help to aggravate the situation, and that's one of the mesos scale features going on. It's going to actually help to uh, increase uh, the temperature contrast across the front. Radar this morning uh, on our uh, regional composite shows uh, those thunderstorms, and we've had a few severe thunderstorm warnings this morning, but the main event is expected to be later this afternoon and into the overnight hours. Right now we have a uh, uh, you can see the little uh, blue dots out there. There are no severe thunderstorm watches in effect, even though this shows uh, one out there. Uh, that one has been canceled. Uh, but we do expect to see some tornado watches later today. QPF-wise, over the next five days uh, through uh, Wednesday, it looks like we're going to have most of our rain come tonight uh, and into Sunday morning. And then uh, the rain moves on out for a while, and we get another round uh, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So it does look like uh, much of the rain you see here forecast. And it looks probably on the order of like uh, around an inch, maybe uh, an inch and a half in some of this heavier thunderstorms. Storm Prediction Center outlooking a fairly significant area of the southeastern U.S. for a slight risk of severe thunderstorms. And in this case, we're looking at all possibilities for severe weather. We're damaging wind, hail, and the possibility of isolated tornadoes. So just keep that in mind as the day goes on. This is the, I can't talk. This is the 06 GFS model run, and uh, you can see from our 18Z map, uh, painting it fairly well, uh, although the, the showers may be just a little further north than what that's showing. Let's take an intermediate time. We'll go to uh, 06Z, which uh, is just after midnight, and you can see the storms. Uh, the focus I would expect to be primarily from about Clanton northward uh, to the Tennessee um, border. So that is going to be uh, my my uh, suggestion for the main uh, focus area. By 18Z midday tomorrow, around 1 o'clock, uh, the showers are diminishing across central Alabama, so I think the, the risk drops off. All right, let's take a look at some of the parameters that we're looking at. One of the parameters that is uh, very stout this morning is the upper jet. This is the 200 millibar level, and you can see that jet uh, over Texas with a little... Um, elongated blue uh, circle right there. That jet will be moving our way, and as it does, of course, it puts us uh, in the uh, left front quadrant, uh, which helps to enhance the lift, and uh, that will certainly help to improve our chances for severe weather, not to mention the fact that down below that, of course, we're dealing with uh, the frontal boundary, which will be enhanced by the fact that we have showers and thunderstorms across the Tennessee-Alabama border right now. Uh, the Sounding, uh, this is the forecast sounding, uh, suggests Cape values on the order of, uh, 
about a thousand or so, uh, with some uh, the GFS uh, going up into the two thousand range. So definitely, we have plenty of instability to deal with. And while the sounding uh, doesn't look all that fantastic, that is, you know, I mean, it, it's a good solid sounding for uh, having severe weather. You notice how we've got moisture down low, but you get above seven hundred millibars and it becomes much drier. Uh, that is, certainly is helpful. And speaking of uh, CAPE, let's go to uh, the CAPE values off the uh, RPM model. And you can see those values uh, climbing into the yellow range, which is over 2,000. This is 18Z today, so that's 1 o'clock. If we go out a little further, the uh, CAPE values actually go up around 0Z, which would be about 7 p.m. And then when we get to uh, midnight, uh, pardon me, 1 a.m., uh, you see that uh, the values begin to fall uh, with the fact that we're losing some of the, the sun's energy and, and those uh, uh, values. So in, uh, in all, everything is coming together. And then mentioning uh, the possibility of tornadoes, uh, the helicity values are certainly quite uh, substantial. Uh, we look for values over about 150, and as you can see, all the way from Clanton all the way up, these values are uh, over 300, uh, with the highest values just to the north of the front. So that frontal position is going to be rather important uh, as uh, the storms ride along just to the south of the front. And uh, so let's get on with uh, the GFS now. And, that, and, of course, I expect to see the Storm Prediction Center putting out uh, tornado watches uh, later today. So... You know, have your plan ready. By Monday, we're uh, in the upper atmosphere. We're under a bit of a zonal flow, and that should keep us uh, dry. Uh, maybe the possibility of a, of a small shower, but I think that's going to be primarily to our east. Uh, by Tuesday, the next short wave is coming through the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles, and that is setting the stage for a surface low off to our west-northwest. Uh, so it does look like Tuesday will be a dry day. The uh, frontal system uh, moves on by us on Wednesday, and that gives us another threat of the possibility of maybe some severe weather, although the surface low is much further north, well up into the Ohio River Valley. By uh, Thursday, that trough has uh, amplified quite a bit, and that means that we're going to see some cooler weather. Look at the 540 line all the way down to the Arklatex, down to near Shreveport. Uh, and that also means that uh, we may see a little bit of shower activity. Don't think we'll have anything severe uh, on Thursday, but that does uh, pave the way for some uh, showers as that trough um, moves into our vicinity. The trough moves by on Friday, and notice that northwesterly flow all the way from southwest Canada all the way down into the southeastern U.S., so that paves the way for us to see uh, somewhat cooler weather. The northwesterly flow sticks with us on Saturday, so that also should be a great day with uh, at least some cooler temperatures and the uh, temperature is a little bit below normal. Very quickly, we'll go out into voodoo country, and uh, it's a, a kind of a continuous stream of weather systems, and that that general trend of the GFS has certainly been there this past week or so, or a couple of weeks, and it continues, and I think it's probably right. Now, the timing could be off just a little bit, but this is the 5th of April, and here comes another shortwave trough, which paves the way for some weather on the 5th and 6th. And then right behind that comes another one. Now, this one's a little further north, but that certainly paves the way for some wet weather on the 9th and 10th. Well, I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning into the Weather Extreme video. By all means, review your uh, severe weather safety plans and be prepared for what the atmosphere might throw at us today. Stay tuned to the blog. And you'll get uh, the latest updates, watches, warnings, and uh, our thoughts on what's going on with the weather. By all means, stay safe and stay alert. Godspeed. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see, all of the places close to me, they're all Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.